thoughts, uh, or rather the thought of initiating this discussion, was actually our uh, presidents, our uh, uh, beloved uh, president, Dr. Geeta Kingji. And we're really very, very happy that she's here amongst us. We are absolutely elated that she's been able to make it, and she's here to join us in this discussion. I would like to just mention over here that we have a number of clubs which we are running in our school. And our senior section is doing so. So members of two clubs, they were already pondering upon this and rather they had already had some discussions regarding this. And these two clubs are Mental Health for Every Adolescent and the Inside Out Club. So these two clubs, they were already working on this. So we thought that it would be a very great idea to talk a little bit more about it and have views from adults also. And we are very happy that we have been joined by a number of educationists here in this panel and this session today. Our students were very disturbed because of that one incident that happened. All of us know about it, involving adolescents, involving children, uh, something that happened on the social media. But then there were so many other aspects also to it. Today, and particularly so in the era nowadays, this uh, topic, social media and the changing trends, social media itself has acquired greater significance. And I'm sure all of us absolutely do understand and believe and have experienced us also that the threat of coronavirus has actually plunged us into the virtual world. Mm -hmm. Today, internet, technology, social media, these have, have become pillars of our support and are very survival. Now, like it or no, there is no running away from technology. Technology is here to stay. And we all know that advantages of technology are galore. We understand that the global outreach, the global reach, the accessibility of social media, of the internet, and of uh, the, uh, the various other platforms that are there, they actually, and also, of course, the kind of information that we get on the social media has really made a very big difference in our lives. We understand that social media today impacts each and every aspect of our life. Our likes and dislikes are actually not like ours, are they? They are not. They are actually ruled by the social media. Our opinions are guided by the social media, or rather our opinions are even swayed by the social media. So in this era, we do, when there is so much of advantage which is already there, which is linked to social media, and the fact that it impacts our psyche in such a big way, we need to be very, very cautious. We need to understand that we should not do anything which may cause harm to others or even harm to ourselves. A slight weakness on part of anyone may lead them into a web of vices. We all know that the use of social media uh, leads to overuse, leads to misuse, and it is because of this that terms like FOMO have been coined. Now, addiction of this kind, addiction to so social media, very often leads to personality changes. So today, the challenge is, how exactly to ensure that we strike a balance. We know that there is no going back. We know that connectivity means strength today. We absolutely know that this is an era of sharing and collaboration. And social media is something which is going to help us in the process. So today we must think of how exactly we must weed out negativity from the social media and ensure that positivity of social media actually flourishes and blossoms. Each post on this very inevitable social media actually is a portrayal of our thoughts. And each one of us has to be very, very cautious of what we post. We have students here. Today we have educators over here. And we're very happy that we have come together so that we can deliberate on this topic. We can think of the way forward. We're extremely happy that we have amongst us today, Dr. Geetha Kingdon, who's going to be leading us, who's going to be show, 
plus the path in this direction so as to ensure that we utilize social media in the right way, we use it in the right manner. We are very happy that we have uh, Mr. Roshan Gandhi here, the Director of Strategy with us. We have uh, Mrs. Aruna Gupta, uh, who's been uh, really working with a group of people in this direction. We are very happy to have Mrs. Uh, Shupra, Shupra Upadhyay, the principal of Jopling Road Campus. Mm -hmm. Dr. Suhail Mohajar is there. Dr. Hamid Mohajar is there. We are so happy to have all of you. Extremely happy also to have with us uh, uh, Mrs. Jyoti Kashyap. I think she's joined. I saw. I think so. And we also have Mrs. Shivani Singh with us, the principals uh, from CMS Aliganj campus. We also have here with us Hema and Rebecca, our counselors, very senior counselors. Thank you so much for taking up time and being taking out time and being here with us. Uh, Gita ma'am, I would also like to mention that we have members of the Mental Health for All Adolescents Club. We have that group here with us. We also have the Inside Out Club, club members. We ha also have some students from the Humanities section of the present class 11, present class 12, and the class 12s that have just given the board examinations. We also have some JYP members amongst us. And of course, when we talk of class 11, we have some new students who have just joined our group. So I'm very, very happy that this is a beautiful forum where we are in. And, uh, and I, I hope that this is going to be a beautiful session. May I uh, request Geeta ma'am to lead us in this session. So may I request you to please take over ma'am and uh, please uh, give your views, your thoughts so that we can take it forward. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that introduction and thank you for organizing this very interesting conversation and thank you for inviting me to say something. I'm not really sure that I have anything so very profound to say, more that I want to listen to the young people uh, and you know to, to, to get what their sense is about how they are trying to negotiate uh, social media and how aware they are of the forces that operate on them when they engage with social media. Um, I think uh, a good school should sponsor such a conversation, uh, should host such a conversation. Um, and the young people's welfare is also very much uh, something that is the job of a school to see uh, too. And that's why we have school counselors as well. Um, so uh, the whole school community has to come together to help uh, in the exploration of reality um, for young people. I mean, for ourselves, we do it too. It's not only for young people, but the truth is that in, in, in the context of a school, the responsibility devolves upon the adults to see to it that young people and their concerns or their predicaments or whatever forces that may be operating upon them, which could lead to either sadness or uh, some uh, ways or in which uh, it's not conducive to their well-being. Uh, if, if, if we perceive that there is there are such forces operating on them, then it's very important to engage the youth in that conversation and to see whether they uh, whether we can we can help them if there are issues that are arising in their minds as well. And I think that having started with that uh, preliminary observation uh, about how important it is for us to join, uh, to host such a conversation and to join such a conversation, I think one thing that's really important to acknowledge is that if we didn't do such a thing, there would be an, an increasing, increasing chasm, an increasing gap, if you like a generation gap. The generation gap would be even bigger because whatever forces that the young people and whatever pressures they are facing, if the adults are not aware of those, or if the adults keep themselves excluded from those conversations that are concerning young people, that are absorbing young people, in fact, that are, uh, you know, really uh, concerning to the young people. If we don't do that, then we would be, um, we would be uh, becoming irrelevant. We would just be seen by the young people as adults who are just concerned about their learning. And that's such a small part of a human being. We have to be concerned about the whole person. So uh, with that preliminary, I mean, I think that one thing, uh, you know, it seems to me that when we talk about the social media and the pressures that it creates for young people, I think uh, I'm I'm quite impressed. You know, see, one of the, 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 the quotations that makes me think about how I would 
you know, guide my own child, for instance. And my son is not a teenager anymore. He's he's 31 years old. But, you know, I've been there and seen it. Um, and and social media was around in those days as well. And they were having to grapple with these issues then as well. So, you know, what we're told is that uh, uprightness is 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 central to to being you know the host of a praiseworthy character and that there's no more important duty today than the perfecting of one's own character and that the betterment of mankind the betterment of humanity betterment of society depends on us cultivating an upright uh, character as well now young people many many young people want to do that but their peers the you know they, they encounter peers in their classroom that's a physical encounter you know in their school uh in their neighborhood perhaps but increasingly they encounter their peer group on the social platforms social media platforms computer platforms and that peer group you know they can conduct their lives in that environment in that virtual environment in complete isolation from for example in a school environment what they're doing who they're interacting with is very visible to the adults around them, to the teachers, to the principals, to their other, uh, to other people, uh, other peers around them. Similarly, you know, when it comes to in the home, the parents can see the behavior of the child, but when they're locked up in their room it, with their just their laptop, they are in a uh, in a social environment which is unmoderated by any adult, and. Uh, so therefore, it becomes very important to equip young people with those, uh, with that sense of their uh, their own uh, enhancing their own awareness of who they are and what their values are, so that when they are in the privacy of their own chambers, in a social environment with other peers whom they don't even know often, um, that they can conduct themselves in a manner that they would themselves later on on reflection be proud of themselves because oftentimes young people behave in a particular manner in a particular peer group setting that later on on reflection with hindsight that they're not very proud of themselves that they, they realize that they behaved in a manner that was not consistent with their values so the most important thing i would like to say in this forum today is that young people need to be assisted in cultivating their own values it is not a question of indoctrination of telling people look these are the right values and you should imbibe them that is not the right thing to do with young thinking people the more important thing is to help them to realize what their values are and to assist them in that process not be didactic prescriptive but to assist them in developing their own values and I think that the JYE program is a very good program, is an absolutely excellent program, because my understanding is that that is exactly what it does. It provides a platform, a community of communication, a community of peers with whom they can discuss these things. And through discussion, they can explore their own values. They can explore their own hearts and minds. And when you articulate something, when you utter something, it's a reflection of what your heart and mind are saying and that is when and when you are with, with a safe group of other peers who you whose values and views you respect you you begin to explore your own values and then you know it, it's not necessary that you develop your values only in that context there are several sources from which our values come we adopt we we, uh, we acquire our values through what we hear our grandparents and our parents say in the home we acquire our values from maybe if there's an atmosphere of respect for one's religious leaders within the home that as if i have grown up in an in an environment where there is respect for what the holy books of my faith say that becomes a source of my values so there are multiple and then we can also acquire our values from tv and from what other people we can acquire our values from advertisements whatever we see around us from our peers we acquire our values from our teachers we can acquire values so there are many many sources from which you, we acquire our identity our thinking our values so question is that you know how can we be assisted in developing those values and it goes to the core of what a human being is their values are what they are their identity is totally you know wrapped up with what their values are and and therefore it is the job of schools to host that conversation and to provide spaces in which young people can develop their thoughts, their ideas, their identities, their values. And that's why this forum is important. And I mean, the only other thing I guess I would say uh,
because you know I, I want to hear other people as well. I guess I I I I'm quite. Um, I mean, what I want young people to do is to realize that there are a host of people out there, institutions, ideologies, uh, groups that want to hack you. They want to shape your thinking. They want to influence you, your mind, your thinking, your preferences, your shopping preferences, your ideology. They want to 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 influence. They want to indoctrinate you in their pet beliefs. Okay, so young people need to understand the forces that manipulate them or that seek to manipulate them, so that they become discerning viewers of information, discerning uh, sort of sifters of information that is out there. Because now the whole world is available to them on the internet, on Google, and on all these social platforms. They have all kinds of ideologies. Whereas previously we could protect our children's thinking, and we could say that look, you know. Because the child was confined either to the home or to the school, so the parents could keep very close tabs on the thinking of their children and on the values of their children. Now the children are totally exposed to the whole of the rest of the world in a way that that their parents are not even aware of as to which forces their children are exposed to. Therefore, it's very very important to help the young people to realize that look, there are forces out there that are seeking to influence you, and before they influence you, you better develop what your own values are. and i think that that's important to do otherwise they will become radicalized and and easily led misled sometimes and you know realize that every moment what you put on the social media big data is capturing that and when they capture that all your preferences all your thoughts all your beliefs you are revealing it from moment to moment every time you give uh, you know a like on a facebook post you are revealing your preference and big data commercial companies are harnessing that data about you and they will use that data to send you advertising materials they will use that other forces will use that data to send you radicalizing material or to change your ideology and your beliefs so it's better if you understand how you are being sought to be manipulated an untutored unaware non self aware young person absolutely right thank you so much ma'am you absolutely true when you say that we are all out in the open now so very vulnerable so we have to protect our children and this is a beautiful forum for doing so uh, thank you so much for your very kind words uh, may i uh, request smriti to please take over now thank you so much principal ma'am and geeta ma'am for your wise wise words and i completely agree and i'm sure that everybody in this room completely agrees with whatever you just said and it was so nice hearing from both of you Uh, moving on with the discussion i'd like to invite advant mishra to just tell us about the relevance and role and importance of social media in today's world thank you smriti good afternoon ladies and gentlemen now while it is impossible to sum up the significance of social media in a few words allow me to do my part aristotle once said and i quote man is a social animal one who can exist without society is either above humanity or below it unquote now the entire system of social networking has been transferred to virtual platforms which make an online presence necessary so as to appeal to our human need of social interaction as a result every individual is on one or the other forms of social media in order to stay connected with people propaganda disseminated through social media is often used for politicization of the masses It is the single most effective means for lobbyists to engage with the general population and extend their agenda to the masses. It is the hub of political debates that are critical in the formation of political opinion and election of new leaders. Seven out of ten of the richest people in the world directly owe their amassed wealth to social media. The expenditure on social media advertising in U.S. alone is more than forty-three billion dollars. Social media marketing is a multi-billion dollar industry sustaining hundreds of thousands of people ranging from influencers to paid agents in public relations. It plays a very strong role in human capital formation giving new outlets to the education sector. At the moment in fact our entire education is dependent on the online classes. Social media is instrumental even in disaster management. funds cannot be collected and volunteering operations cannot be run without the indispensable support of social media 
facing this pandemic would be unimaginable without the help of social media. So ladies and gentlemen, social media is no longer a luxury. In this information era, it is an irreplaceable part of our lives. Thank you. Thank you so much for your input, Advan. We feel enlightened now that we know that what are the exact places, especially in these tough and difficult and different times, as Principal Ma'am puts it, that we need social media now more than ever to run those errands that we cannot uh, while being confined to our homes. Uh, having said that, I would now like to invite Ifra Fatima for telling us about the challenges that people face, that youth face by using social media. Thank you, Smriti. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Phones and social media have become an integral part of a teenager's life in this era. And however important and necessary social media is for the development and exposure of a teen's body and mind, but we must not overlook or ignore the threatening challenges they pose. So I would like to list some of the major challenges which are uh, faced by most of the people, mostly teenagers. The first and foremost challenge is time consumption. When we start scrolling through our Facebook feed, there is no going back. There are innumerable number of distractions. And then we say that we don't have enough time. Sadly, uh, the time which has to be spent on useful and productive work is spent on vague and uh, useless posts. This, uh, this is a challenge where we have to come up with an e effective strategy to control our time management and use our time in productive work. The second challenge is widespread of rumors. This is quite threatening and dangerous. Widespread uh, rumors and grapevine informations are very misleading and they have dangerous consequences. On social media platforms, they spread like forest fires and we still have to come up with an efficient strategy to control this. The, another challenge with uh, social media poses us is anxiety. In this era of social media, our worth is defined by the number of followers and likes we have on various social media platforms. And people and teenagers who are involved in this mad race of gaining more and more followers often become vulnerable to stress and anxiety. And it, uh, it proves quite, uh, it has quite dangerous consequences. The last and the most threatening challenge of social media which is quite apparent in this era is uh, cyberbullying. Passive aggressive and rude comments are used as a weapon on various social media platforms against some people and uh, this is most common among the teenagers. And even there are uh, various recent issues which prove this. So we have to come up, uh, these were some of the major challenges and the management and everyone, everybody uh, the society, we have to come up with effic efficient strategies and steps to control these challenges so that social media becomes a fruitful platform for us to ex uh, to develop and grow. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ifra, for your inputs. And I, as a part of the young population of this country, could definitely relate to all of those challenges. And I'm sure that every young person, in fact, every person present here must have faced some of the other challenges that you just uh, stated. So thank you so much for your input. And uh, moving on for, uh, with this discussion, I'd like to invite Fiza Hassan for telling us about some recent incidents in the history of social media that call for worry or thought. Uh, thank you, Smriti. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm here with uh, three to four incidents related to cyberbullying, uh, which may uh, like prove what the discussion is we are holding for. Like we need to take a lot of measures because such incidents, many of which go unnoticed. So number one is the boys' locker room, a very inc recent incident. On 3rd May, a series of screenshots were posted on an Instagram by an Instagram user carrying snippets of conversations between 30 odd minor participants on an Instagram group called the Boys Locker Room. 
the participants involved are accused of exchanging photographs of other female instagram users some of whom are underage girls and passing lewd comments on the group a fresh twist has emerged in the boys locker room case the cyber cell of delhi police on sunday said that a juvenile girl who assumed the identity of a teenaged boy created a fake snapchat profile and discussed sexual assault on a girl with another minor boy the second case i'd like to mention is of a 21 year old undergraduate student of lady shri ram college delhi which became the who became the target of online harassment when she was just 12 she stated that a classmate from a previous school had been collecting her photos and information about her and had used that to forge a facebook page in her name what initially seemed like harmless teasing soon turned vicious schoolmates took to sending crude messages and unable to cope she started avoiding her friends she finally sought counseling to deal with depression and finally switched to schools third case i'd like to present is of a 19 year old resident of ashok vihar in northwest delhi who had been told violently 5 years ago for a facebook post critical of the government but she did not report the harassment she said because she had no idea how to she also stated that one of the biggest problems in reporting cyber bullying is that a large number of vulnerable victims don't even recognize that what is happening to them is bullying fourth case that i'd like to present is of a student of a prominent delhi school who went to the police after being stalked by a facebook user whom she had befriended on the site a month ago she had given her cell phone number to the man who was later found to be using a fake name photo and phone number the two started chatting on whatsapp after the friend introduced himself as a businessman She had also shared her residential address, school name and the tuition timings with him. He then allegedly tried to force her into going with him somewhere outside Delhi. Following this, the victim stopped taking his calls and also blocked him from Facebook, WhatsApp and Instagram. She says he then started stalking her and even issued issued threats. So these were like uh, four of the many cyber bullying cases. So now I'd like to invite Deepthi Ma'am to share a very crucial piece of information with all of us. Uh, thank you, Fiza, for doing that. And uh, while we were preparing and we were undergoing literature to put up in our discussion today, uh, we came across a website that is uh, by UNICEF. That is UNICEF.org. You can see it on the screen bottom. That is to end. violence and to end cyber bullying we all can note down this uh, link and if you go and visit this website there are very uh, systematic ways by website's name that if by any chance anything wrong has happened how to report suppose you're being cyber bullied on facebook what are the channels you can report so this is a one way if by any chance you've come across any sort of cyber bullying we need to report it further i would like to take it up in the sense that uh, how it affects our mind the impact of social media on our mind when i say impact yes this millennials this youngsters they are mostly impacted the most because there is one survey being conducted by american psychological association when they were being inquired about uh, i worry about negative effects of social media on my physical and mental health millennials reported 48% of the time they worry that social media is a part of their negative uh, worries or overthinking further we know there are positive and negative aspects of social media positive can increase their self in self worth and even when they teach the social media to elders they gain self confidence the way they are engaging in society just like our jyp animators they can uh, be a inspiration to others they can post all those things they can be more creative but if you see a research in uh, done by california state university we can see the negative effects of social media as uh, in today's world when we 
think of this term health we even talk about uh, the environmental factors on health and to addition the online factors so if you see this thing this slide it tells us nine psychological disorders that are directly related to excessive use of social media if i related to nowadays as i've done my internship from noor manzil so while i was doing my internship i realized that there was one center and still they have one center for uh, de addiction from social media where kids come for uh, getting themselves treated because they are addicted with their cell phone for 22 hours in a day 22 hours means a lot so we need to be cautious that uh, what are we doing how we are using social media it can affect our, our personality and our health in a very worse manner this is uh, one term that i would like to highlight here it's piu that is problematic internet use we use internet in a very constructive manner too but when it becomes piu as described by Christie's and Merino in 2009 they said that this can lead to dangerous disorders like depression because they feel they are isolated they are not getting a physical platform to show their emotions so we as elders it's our role to handhold them to bring them a positive environment the way JYP students are doing along with the other co curricular activities like we have manju ma'am in our campus she gives a platform which is safe and secure for students to put forward their views so that's all that i wanted to say regarding this for now thank you so much deepthi ma'am and thank you so much fiza for sharing those incidents for sharing the resources with us and it is definitely a very scary thing to even think of the prospect of happening uh, of these things happening to somebody so moving ahead with the discussion now that we've discussed the problems the incidents i think it is just appropriate to also discuss what we can actually do about these things how to prevent cyber bullying how to prevent the social media hazards and for that i'd like to invite rishi badaria thank you so much smriti for acknowledging so talking about the preventive measures that you can take against cyber bullying i would like to talk about certain tips tip 1 be wary of your child's online activities teenagers and adolescents are more vulnerable to cyber bullying as they have limited understanding of the good and the bad as a parent be cognizant of the apps and the digital media that your child is using it is imperative that you ensure that your child engages more in offline activities than an addiction to computers online gaming and smartphones tip 2 Watch out for some signs, as in your child being withdrawn or depressed, sudden increase or decrease in his or her social media activity. Trying not to talk about his or her social ma- media life, especially with you. Tip three: What you can do in the aftermath. Try to hold a conversation, but don't try to sound too prying or demanding. But gently engage your ward in a conversation. Take him or her into confidence that you try to understand what is happening. when it all started and who or who all are involved try to maintain a record of the online activities if possible take screenshots of any offensive or harmful content or post in any case evidence of online activities is mandatory when reporting cyber bullying then most of the social media platforms have clear guidelines in place to report cyber bullying social media platforms can help you in having the offensive post removed as well to report cyber bullying in india you can send your complaint to complaint-mwcd@government.in. immediately register a complaint with the police in case your child is receiving sexual or physical threats or you sense an illegitimate like illegitimate activity or crime in the way then recovering from trauma of cyber bullying can be time taking and hard so in such cases the victim needs support and guidance it could come from parents peers family members or teachers if required seek the help of a professional counselor as well then how to report cyber bullying in india talking about it specifically an act of cyber bullying can be reported at the cyber crime cell of any city 
regardless of the place where the act was committed cyber bullying or cyber defamation of any kind is considered as a cyber crime and the laws covering them come under the information technology act and in addition there is also an incognito forensic foundation iff lab which is a forensic labo laboratory in bangalore and china sorry Ch uh, chennai that offers consultation and digital forensic services for cyber bullying if you need any guidance on how to prevent cyber bullying or report cyber bullying in india iff lab is there to assist you iff lab has a state of the art digital forensic laboratory that houses the latest digital forensic tools and technologies this enables them to join hands with the law enforcement agencies for investigating cases on online defamation and cyber bullying so as far as we can see government of india has a lot to offer is that the only thing is that we need to get informed ourselves about it thank you thank you so much for making us aware about those facts and about telling us how we can uh handle with these things should they happen to us so with that i'd like to move on with the discussion by inviting fiza hasan again for telling us about the network etiquettes or net etiquettes as we call them and these are simple rules that we must follow on social media these are codes of conduct or etiquettes that we must follow in order to maintain a good social media presence for us and in order to avoid getting ourselves into trouble so fiza please uh, unmute yourself okay thank you smriti so i'll be stating five main rules relating to the etiquettes on social media rule number 1 is to remember the human when communicating electronically whether through email instant message discussion post text or some other method practice the golden rule do unto others as you would have others do unto you remember your written words are read by real people all deserving of respectful communication before you press send or submit ask yourself would i be okay with this if someone else had written it rule number 2 is to help keep flame wars under control what is meant by flaming and flame wars flaming is what people do when they express a strongly held opinion without holding back any emotion as an example think of the kinds of passionate comments you might read on a sports blog while flaming is not necessarily forbidden in virtual communication flame wars is when two or three people exchange angry posts between one another and which must be controlled or the friendship of the group could be compromised don't feed the flames extinguish them by guiding the discussion back to a more productive direction rule number 3 respect other people's privacy depending on what you are reading in the virtual world be it an online class discussion forum facebook page or an email you may be exposed to some private or personal information that needs to be handled with care perhaps someone is sharing some medical news about a loved one or discussing a situation at work what do you think would happen if this information got into the wrong hands embarrassment hurt feelings loss of a job just as you expect others to respect your privacy so should you respect the privacy of others be sure to err on the side of caution when deciding to discuss or not to discuss virtual communication rule number 4 don't abuse your power just like in face to face situations there are people in cyber space who have more power than others they have more expertise in technology or they have years of experience in a particular skill or subject matter maybe it's you who possesses all of this knowledge and power just remember knowing more than others do or having more power than others may have does not give you the right to take advantage of anyone think of the first rule which i mentioned which is remember the human rule number 5 be forgiving of other people's mistakes not everyone has the same amount of experience working in the virtual world and not everyone knows the rules of netiquette at some point you will see a stupid question re read an unnecessarily long response or encounter misspelled words when this happens practice kindness and forgiveness as you would hope someone would do if you minor offense you might want to let it slide 
if you feel compelled to respond to a mistake do so in a private email rather than a public forum so these were the five main rules that i uh, i wanted to just state there that's it from my side thank you so much fiza and now that we are all aware of these network etiquettes or netiquettes i'm sure that all of us will take care to follow them and uh, make sure that we also educate others about it so that the internet is a happier better more productive and a less toxic place for all of us uh, having said that i would like to invite deepthi ma'am to tell us about the role that educators adults and peer groups can play in uh, making social media a better place for the young ones and to educate them to put them on the right path as a counselor thank you smriti for doing that as a counselor i feel that uh, we as adults uh, even as peer groups we need to be very very cautious and we need to monitor that uh, young children can easily the you know misguided online we understand that so we need to hand hold them we need to train them just like my one conversation with hamid sir mentioned that we should have proper guidelines we should learn how to use technology he even mentioned that we should have a subject like that in school where everyone is taught what is the right behavior what's the wrong behavior because we just have gone through the cons of it it comes with a lot of benefits but if we focus on negatives it becomes really really difficult parents and caregivers need to be aware of the effect of different sites because there are certain uh, sites with restricted uh, age groups so we need to monitor what our children are doing and if i say if we do it together if we learn together if we watch things together it will be more, more easier for people to monitor it will be more easier for parents to gauge and what children are exposed to what is the content like further uh, yes i will emphasize on training we need to train our youngsters like how to uh, use internet and thank you for uh, taking up all those netiquette we need to be very very cautious of that along with that technology is more effective when used together we need to engage communicate and learn and create a an environment which is secure and safe for everyone because all of these together can increase our self esteem and will lead to uh, will make you a more confident person here i would uh, like to add or rather request manju ma'am because she is working in our branch and she is uh actually in a way increasing the self esteem of students by providing them different platforms just like we are here today so i would like her to share her views on it thank you manju ma'am okay thank you deepthi ma'am uh, as activity coordinator i would just like to emphasize on one thing that uh, as geeta ma'am also mentioned that we have to train our students to develop their uh, own ideologies their own uh, you know value system once that is developed they don't have any problem in making choices making choices what i feel that should not harm any one whatever act they are doing so for uh, just uh, to elevate their self esteem what i did in uh, Uh, the school itself that as teachers teachers can very well and very easily recognize the kind of you know spark in their students the kind of magic which they have in their students the kind of potential the hidden potential or some talent in their students the only thing is that if they recognize it that is the only way to give them platform which i am trying to give why because uh, abha ma'am is there principal ma'am is there with all the support so we are creating that kind of platform so that they can uh, not only you know exhibit their talent but also enhance as well as develop and get appreciation getting appreciation i suppose is very very important so that they know their own you know worth when they recognize their self worth yes i am good at something and uh, 
keeping them you know uh, i am also engaging them motivating them through the social media only so giving them appreciation some words of appreciation some smile or just talking to them so that is more than enough for their lives because that builds their self confidence self esteem elevation that leads to self confidence and once they have the self confidence and self worth realization of self worth that everyone knows that i am so good at something or the other as everyone is good at something either in performing art or in fine art or in sports or in oratory some or the other skill there only our responsibility that how we are going to give them platform and the opportunity so that they can write well they can draw well we can exhibit them we can show them so once they have the self confidence yes i am something they improve in their all spheres of and they have good choices also even academics they start improving even they have good choices they develop that kind of rational mind as uh, and the manipulative ideologies and all which are going on as geeta ma'am mentioned earlier we can save them from there because we are developing a kind of you know a rational mind in them that what to choose what not to choose they are going to work in vedas also that was said about the man buddhi and vivek so uh, man is very chanchal so he uh, it is saying that do this do that buddhi is giving all the strategies but the only thing that vivek is there where they have that whether to choose this or not to choose this whether to channelize my this uh, energy or talent or skill in a proper manner so that it is beneficial for society that we have to take care of and that is very well going on in gomti nagar one branch with all the activities coming today that's all i want to say thank you so much thank you so much ma'am for your inputs and we are definitely glad to have such adults with us who are always there to guide us and uh, be an inspiration for us and we are literally so blessed to have such teachers such guiding panel for us and uh, with that i'd like to call upon i'd like to invite uh, our respected principal ma'am again to deliver the wrap up the closing address for us well uh, thank you so much dear but this is not the wrap up Can at just, all it is not yeah. the wrap up at all <laughs> we'd like to yeah 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 we'd yeah. like to hear because we have such wise people here with us today it is such a beautiful panel so we want to hear all our educators who are here we have created this opportunity so that we have our students as well as our teachers all together uh, we have counselors from different branches but before that i would like to invite uh, Uh, Dr. Uh, Suhail Mohajer, would you like to say something? Would you like to uh, share your experience and uh, please share your words of wisdom with us? Uh, Dr. Mohajer, you'll have to uh, unmute yourself and speak. Yeah. Yeah, I just said that uh, I wanted to first thank. Mrs. Gupta and Mrs. Apa Anand and the councillors of Gomtinagar branch for organizing this meeting, and it was a very great learning experience for me listening to the students as well as listening to the teachers. Uh, I really don't want to say much. All I want to say is that I was reading one article that the social media they have the same effect on our brain as you know drugs. They actually you know the kids when they are you know on social media for long hours, it changes their brain. The same way, in the same way that drugs will change our brain. So in a way, they become really addicted to these media. And if suppose, by some reasons, suppose if there is no electricity or the internet is not working, they feel so disturbed when they don't have access to these media. So, though I agree, you know, I mean, definitely we must emphasize the positive side of you not know, using the social media, but. like everything else i think the use of social media should be in moderation anything taken to excess would be harm so that's all i want to say thank you so much that's really wonderful i think all of us uh, all of us uh, over here mentioned that addiction is something which is really really bad and it's killing so it's uh, really nice to uh, hear from you that uh, moderation is something that has to be brought in and uh, it has to be done through various means uh, well activities are a great uh, a means of uh, ensuring that the children learn they learn to discern they learn to uh, uh, make wise choices pick the correct choice be able to 
uh, discern and be able to make the right choice and uh, thereafter and therefore be able to make a difference in their lives uh, we are very very happy that we have uh, with us uh, uh, mr roshan gandhi our director strategy and children would love to hear from him um, uh, how exactly social media or rather how exactly can we make our experience in the social media um, beneficial for each one of us so can we hear that from uh, roshan sir Oh, um, thank you, thank you so very much for inviting me, and it, it was a really great learning experience to hear from everyone. Um, I, I'm in I'm in the unique position where uh, I yes. sort of category of, of wise older people, but in reality, I'm just a young person like all of the presenters, and I'm a very active user of social media myself. Um, so, so uh, it, it's very relevant to me to learn about these things. I would echo what um, what Kitama had said at the beginning, which is that almost the, the best thing that uh, people like me or Kitama or Alhaman can do uh, in these areas is is to do very little. In the sense that we should basically be creating the, the space and the opportunity for students to to reach their measured, well thought conclusions and to express those and to listen to those. Uh, because I think that you know, students are in the best position to understand their own reality um, mm -hmm. if they are given the space and, and the tools to do so. And so I'm going the efforts of um, Arhaman and the counselors and the JYP team and Gunkinigar branch and all the teachers for clearly doing a great example of that and just giving these students the space to understand the social media situation and to draw very, very reasonable conclusions because they understand um, that you know, social media is, is here to stay. It's not something that we can wish away or something that can be avoided. They understand that it can have very positive beneficial effects. Uh, but as Dr. Sahel rightly said, um, they also understand that it must be used in moderation and they've been able to very articulately produce you know, a set of, of very valid guidelines for its proper use. Um, so, so I, I really, really appreciate that, uh, and I hope to have many more opportunities to hear from these students and their very wise insights. Thank you very, very much for having me today. Thank you so much, Roshan. That was really nice. Indeed, uh, we understand that uh, social media is here to stay, but then we have to use it with great responsibility. And uh, our children are only going to be able to learn uh, to acquire that wisdom if they are given more and more opportunities to take decisions to make decisions. And this is what we are trying in our small little ways in our campus to ensure that we give the opportunity to these little, these children, grown up children, I would like to call them. I feel that way. I don't feel like calling them. Uh, uh, I call them young so. people. And yeah, yeah. they're the young people. <laughs> and, and what I want to, I want to pay a tribute to you and to your campus for creating those spaces. You know, I, I, I know that many of our campuses have uh, junior youth empowerment programs and they are also worthy of lots of congratulations for you know having recognized the importance of creating those spaces uh, for that conversation for children to have in a non-prescriptive uh, way uh, but i think in your campus you've gone a little further than that or maybe quite a lot further than that because for one thing you've established this club one was the mental health for all club and then there was another club what was that inside, inside out, out. Club. Inside, out. Inside, out. Club. inside out inside out yeah that was the other thing. So yeah. this, these two forums seem extraordinary. I mean, I'm not aware of many schools that have this sort of thing. And yet, to me, it seems central to the purpose of a school to empower the children to empower means that they become independent thinkers, solid, upstanding citizens who know who they are, that then they, they, can, they are ready to face the world they are empowered to face the world. So to create such people who, who their confidence, the inner confidence comes from within. And that's why your Inside Out Club is in fact, even, you know, <laughs> named that. <laughs> you strengthen the inside, the outside will come out strong by itself. So these names are also coined by students, Didi. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Right, so we have eight more such clubs. So you'll be gradually seeing because they're all working or even during these times, they're all busy, they're all working. So there is a lot of positivity. So uh, if there is positivity around, I think uh, it leads to a lot of uh, productive, positive work. 
and this mm. is what we believe in absolutely um mm. it also we have one more white piper in our school you know uh mr hamid he's the hamid sir of our school and uh, uh, a lot of children like to follow him they like to listen to him he's uh, in such close contact with all our jyp animators uh, i think it will be very nice if he also shares his views on this topic with us today because the very purpose of uh, this uh, forum is to ensure that we dissipate this information or this sort of a session um, down into other uh, classes into other sections into more and more st students uh, to be able to involve more and more students and at the same time uh, take it further to other campuses also so may i request mr hamid uh, muhajir to please uh, share his views uh, yeah uh, i think one good thing that the lockdown has done is that it finally decided that we need social media it wasn't something <laughs> that for the past many days a lot of the staff have been trying to convince the students that social media is a bad thing and exactly uh, it was causing a lot of <laughs> headache for me when they would come and say sir do you think social media is a bad thing and i would say i think it's the most amazing invention in the history of mankind and then they would say but we just came from this meeting where we were told that we should all get out of social media and it's a evil thing and it's a bad thing and also uh, okay maybe you should obey what the school says and don't follow me in this but but now for once we know that we cannot live without social media especially until the corona virus is there uh, yes we, it is a good thing uh, as long as with as other thing it's a tool it's not an end in itself and it's how we use the tool so i'm quite happy that this uh, discussion has started this dialogue has started uh, about what is good what is the challenges what is the right balance and i think this dialogue in itself will lead to a lot of thing uh, and i think in just 6 months we have moved a great way ahead that from thinking of social media as a evil which everybody should get out and it should be removed from the world to actually now students talking about it discussing it trying to understand uh how it works and the responsible way of being what is the balance what is moderation so i think uh, and i think this is a discussion that's only going to go further and further and as i was saying i think pretty soon the icsc cbsc or cms somebody will realize that social media is way more important today than physics chemistry biology and the kids who really understand the social media the biggest as i think one of the students said that seven of the 10 richest people are actually people who are on social media who use social media for the businesses and i think very soon we are going to realize that this has to be given much more importance and it has to be studied as a subject in the schools Uh, for businesses for in the economics chapters in the science chapters the sharing of information the learning from uh, people in the world i think uh, at some point of time social media and will be one of the most important subjects and the faster we start this dialogue this talking about it i think the faster we'll reach there thank you i think that's all i want to say Thank you so much, Hamid. Uh, very right. We need to <clears throat> now make it a subject of study because then only will children uh, learn all the advantages and be able to weed out all the uh, disadvantages and make sure that they use it in the correct manner. We have one student, Alim Muhammad Alim. He wanted to say something. Uh, Alim, would you please uh, speak up? You had mentioned. You have mentioned in the chat box that you want to speak. Alim. Um. Thank you, you like ma'am. Can I say something? Yes, Alim. Yes, ma'am. Can we see Thank you? you Can we see you? Video wasn't uh, was a necessity here today. Could you switch on the video? Okay. Oh, thank uh, you. That's nice. Thank okay. You. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Ma I want to say that uh, I want actually I want to mention that where it all started, like uh, when okay. Facebook, uh, like the platform Facebook was first introduced. Uh, right. When Facebook asked to, uh, you need to sign up. as you don't have the id what is the first thing that they ask to do they first ask your name mm -hmm. then your profession then your email id then your address and it's it makes very easy to track you down 
so that is the first move when uh, the happening of uh, like cyber bullying and uh, tracking down a user to its original location started and when i say that uh, uh, cyberbullying has been happening in the past two days and I've uh, also come across a user who's a, a junior of our school, I can't uh, mention her name. Uh, she's having some difficulties on her Instagram uh, account that uh, her uh, pictures have been uh, uh, using for uh, to be pretending to be someone, uh, somebody is pretending to be somebody else using her using a picture. So there are certain laws that have been made and some uh, very old laws that can be applied. Like we have the Article Twenty One, we have the Article Forty Four, we have the uh, defame law that can be uh, uh, that can be taken in terms of the cyber law, and we also have the. Uh, civil law that can also be uh, applied as in terms of cyber law and we also have that uh, uh, link provided by Indian government to facilitate the uh, victims that have uh, been facing this cyber bullying and it is very effective and further if you provide some evidence um, it uh, 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 that department won't ask that users many more uh, some more questions and that uh, uh, whomsoever is doing that will be tracked down in a few days so that's it I want to see. Absolutely, Alan. That was something very beneficial that you mentioned over here. We need to strengthen our students. We need to tell them that they don't have to be afraid. They must speak up because the cyber laws have really, really become very strong nowadays. So they must speak up. So if you know uh, there is somebody who is uh, going through a bad time, you must definitely let us know about it. And we'll definitely try to help the child, right? So that was really nice that you mentioned it here. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we also have Mrs. Uh, Shipra Upadhyay here with us. She's the principal of Road Campus. Uh, we'd like to hear her views on this topic too. Shipra, ma'am. Shipra, ma'am, are you there? Um, no, I think uh, she's left. Okay. Uh, I had a query. Averal had a query. Averal Sharvasta. Okay, please go ahead. This is the students and the uh, Educators uh, forum, so we must have you people speaking. Averal. Um, good, good afternoon to every uh, one and all present here. Ma'am, I need to ask that uh, what is the objective of this initiative that we are taking? Are we trying to change the students of our own school first, or are we trying to change a whole global aspect right now? Okay, uh, would somebody else like to answer this? Geeta, ma'am, would you like to answer this, or no, we can? But maybe uh, if we ask Geeta ma'am to speak about it a little bit. Yes, ma'am, sure, sure. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Geeta ma'am, would you like to answer that? Um, he is asking us what is the purpose. So, of course, we are. Yeah, the purpose it is of, nice of you. What is purpose the purpose of holding, holding this session? Is it that we want to change only the students of our own school? Or is it that we are talking at a more global level? Well, you know, uh, 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 obviously, one would, uh, in a rather ecumenical sense, one would like to uh, to address uh, the problem at a global level, and we should act at all levels. As human beings, we should act at all levels, global, national, regional, local, uh, and very local, you know, in our own school. Obviously, our sphere of influence is more, our own constituency is more our own students and our own, uh, you know, uh, parents and, and and staff so i think that uh, the first part of call is you know to correct our own selves our me individually i need to correct myself i'm responsible for one soul and that is my own right but as a parent and as a teacher i am also responsible for some other uh, individuals who are in my care and you know only to teachers and to parents is given the right to guide other people you know, that means the students, the children. Uh, nobody else has the right to, to guide anybody. Only the parent and only the teacher has the right to guide children. Since we are in that position of trust, that position of responsibility, our purpose in hosting this session, my purpose in suggesting that we host such a conversation was this, that we want to empower our young people by giving them a platform to think about, to share their ideas. Because when you have a platform like this, it concentrates the mind. It gets you to think in advance, perhaps read a little bit 
bit or do some research Th those young people that came came forth uh, you know uh, fiza came and alim and and others smithy and so on um, you know they made short presentations based on research that they had done right uh, and they also shared their own interpretations of those that research and that, those findings um, so I, I i think that that articulation that utterance of those thoughts that they had or the findings that they came across that is strengthening for them as individuals so when we come to a platform such as this when we express our thoughts or when we hear such thoughts expressed by other people we are better able to shape our own views and our own opinions and our own values so that is the purpose for doing this this is the virtual equivalent of a jyep class or you could call it your you know your class of your mental well-being club or your inside out club this is an extension of the same idea thank you ma'am for that and i really appreciate the step that that is being taken ma'am uh, there is another query that if we are trying to um, give the specific the correct guidelines as of how social social media should be used correctly then ma'am why have we not discussed the problems that our own school is facing that kids of our school is facing are facing uh right so are you talking of some specific problem because uh, we have uh, deepthi ma'am who the children go to whenever there is a problem okay and then apart from that whenever we come to know uh, we we strengthen you people we keep talking to you about the various uh, support which uh, is available and support is always like geeta ma'am just mentioned parents teachers are the best support that you can get so then whenever there is a problem we definitely try to address Uh, such problems, and if there is anything which has come up, we will definitely make sure that once we come to know about it, Deepthi Ma'am will definitely find out, and we will, uh, she will definitely take care of that. Thank you so much, Avril, for uh, those very pertinent questions that you asked. And rest assured that we are going to take this talk onto a bigger level. Here we had a handful of children, but then we are going to take this to individual other groups also. Once it be do it in the senior classes, we'll take it down a little bit to the. junior sections also uh, deepthi ma'am has already been uh, talking to the uh, students of all sections uh, we have been during our assembly time right now of course is the different kind of situation where we are not being able to communicate with the students but then we this is one platform through which we will be communicating with more and more students so rest assured we are there with you people we are there with all the students and we will definitely like to dissipate this pass this on and all the research that has been done for today's presentation is also going to be utilized well very well for optimally utilized for other presentations also uh ma'am ma i would like to add one thing here yes ma'am even um, the students were saying uh, i mean who prepared this they were taking they want to take it further to a research yes. project where they want to assess individuals attitude towards different uh, social media platforms and what are their views about it so i am working with this children to come across uh for a, a guidelines like how to go with a research project here for another two years that will be a longitudinal sort of uh, study so they mm -hmm. have their broad vision on that now right so when so talks like this happen uh the students become empowered and they able to speak to others and they become a self help group you yourself will become so empowered you'll be able to speak to the others and get them out of any problems that are there uh, shipra ma'am have you been able to join back uh no i think she is not there uh would hema or rebecca like to speak uh, would they like to share their views hema ma'am and rebecca ma'am yes ma'am uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this virtual session um i'm very glad that children spoke very strongly using the social media in such a judicious way and wisely and wisdom is one word that i would like to focus over here that whatsoever we do or whatsoever we use in our personal life if we use this terminology called wisdom then that particular thing can be a blessing for us otherwise if we do not use wisdom then then that same particular thing can ruin our entire life and this is true for social media also if we use it wisely and judiciously it will become a blessing for us as we have already seen that there are so many children who have made lots and lots of innovations using social media 
but at the same time we have seen children who landed up in multiple problems just because they did not use the wisdom so we all need to keep this particular word in our mind while using social media that's all thank you so much that was beautifully said ma'am indeed wisdom uh, sans wisdom without wisdom we would uh, not be human beings so we have to be able to use our wisdom judiciously and ensure Uh, that we take the right steps and right decisions more important is making the right decision understanding what i'm doing is right or wrong being able to differentiate between right and wrong is very important uh, uh we also had uh, would hema ma'am would like to say something because after this i think it's uh, time for us to close also hema ma'am uh okay i think she's left uh, deepthi aruna gupta ma'am Ma'am, you have been uh, uh, in this close group, and you have been working for the welfare and well-being of the children. Uh, how can we not hear something from you? Because you've been working so hard to ensure that our children remain mentally healthy. Can we hear it from you, ma'am? Thank you so much, Abha, ma'am, and your wonderful Gompi Nagar team. I think a great applause to all of you. It was indeed a very, very enriching uh, session, and uh, the children. have really enlightened us today to know that they are so well versed about the social media in many a ways and yes they have, there was many pertinent points as geeta ma'am rightly said the social media the pressure it has created on all of us but the, it it has taken out the best in all of us we've had wonderful i think cms has done a wonderful job for the past two months making the children feel very comfortable with the online classes the innovations everything has been so judiciously done and all teachers students alike have taken on to social media with such a bang now we have to be very very careful and we are very concerned and you have personally the team has smriti a big thank you to smriti dipti feza manju anand ma'am your the lovely club you've already you're into it uh, inside out and mental health club i think i need to congratulate you on that because that itself leads on to a, a right direction that uh, the vicious yeah. use of social media and even now with the with the way you are doing it is our responsibility as adults that we monitor the social media and keep counseling taking the views of the children children have already given us a guidelines almost given us a guidelines uh, of how to go about using the social media how to prevent ourselves from the misuse of social media and also i'd like to say the etiquettes of social media are so very important and it is something i would like to tell them like normal life we live now there is this covid normalcy the social media normalcy is on the similar wavelength how we address people how we handle the media and yes wisdom lies in that the, that we give rest we step aside use uh, you know do a lot of exercise do yoga do little meditation to keep ourselves you know uh, physically strong so that mentally also when we are using the social media we are judicious in every way so I would like to congratulate uh, Abha Ma'am to you for taking on this initiative, which was a, a thought given, a seed given to you, and you took it out so beautifully because your children are already into it in a big way. It is not something that you've just taken on to a session. A big congratulations to you and your team, to Smriti who coordinated it very beautifully, chaired it. Thank you so much, Ma'am. Smriti, Manju Anand, Ma'am. and the complete team of fiza fiza gave us lovely challenging things very boldly she stated the challenges that children face on social media yes these are to be addressed one of the children right fully told us the even the laws that are there so strong the laws are that we can give them the support only as abha ma'am said they must come up to you to the counselors and to the principal we can all assist our children so they are Cyber safe. Thank you so much, Abha, ma'am, uh, for inviting us to thank this you. very fruitful session. Thank you, thank you so much, ma'am. That was so beautifully said.
uh, and indeed caution is the word at every step and if we are cautious we will not be able to we will not be trapped into any difficult situation but then if we are trapped we have to learn to come out of it and this is the kind of strength that uh, forums like can like this can give us that we acquire the strength to be able to speak up if there is anything wrong that is happening to us on the social media platform so let us all become uh, more feel more empowered and be able to talk about problems if they if there are if they exist if there is somebody who is misleading we must be able to talk about the problems that are there we must be able to make our parents our teachers the best friends because if they are our best friends nothing in the world can harm anyone nothing not, no harm can come i remember a case very well last year it was 10 o'clock at night and deepthi and myself we went on and on talking about a child who was really in a problem and uh, uh, we were regularly she was asking me what to do next and i was telling her and she was trying to help the child uh, the problem was related to the social media but then whatever directions whatever way we discussed things we were able able to bring her out of that problem because not every case has a similar kind of treatment so it's every every case every yeah. child every experience is different and uh, we have to give it a different uh, thought and be able to uh, help the child in that the manner which would suit the situation the child is in so that is very important and there in comes the role of the of adults of educationists and of course children to be empowered so thank you very much all of you for making the session so very fruitful um, all that you people said was really really precious and uh, we would definitely like to uh, spread this word uh, into i mean all all sections all other Uh, sections and sections of our classes our senior classes and all our other sections also we definitely like to continue with this so thank you for the thought uh, uh, geeta ma'am thank you uh, arna ma'am for helping us out in this and uh, over to smriti yes. smriti uh, we'll give you the, the last word because this is uh, the students can forum can I, before, yes, before smriti wraps up may Please i just ma say yes, that it's very lovely that uh, like you yourself also uh, very kindly thanked all the others who have joined from different campuses and it would be great if they felt that it could be used if they felt that it could be useful to hold such a thing for their senior students uh, then you know they might like to do it as well for their respective campuses so thank you rebecca ma'am uh, thank you hema ji ji from rajendragar one and uh, shivani ma'am from ali ganj one jyoti ma'am and uh, those who are from other campuses as well ma'am i think we must thank you and uh, 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 abha ma'am for this beautiful session and uh, it's really i mean finally we are talking about it that's something very nice and the yeah. children are so well prepared and you know with all the laws and everything i was amazed and uh, thank you so much for such session ma'am thank you so much <laughs> great thank you to it was a <laughs> thought it was the idea of geeta ma'am and she was very uh, correct in saying that children must learn to speak out and express themselves and children have done it very beautifully and they are they've come so well prepared they know the norms in and out thank you abha ma'am for holding it thank you abha ma'am for the invite thank you and let me let me also thank all the students for putting up this uh, beautiful for holding and organizing this uh, session and i know you people keep organizing numerous such sessions we don't the get the a chance yeah. to be uh, a part of the sessions because we know that uh, there is so much that you people are doing uh, geeta ma'am just let me mention tomorrow there is there is uh, something very special which is coming up uh, which is an uh, a club an entrepreneurship club that they have and there is one more session which is coming up tomorrow where uh, we will have a, 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 an entrepreneur who is going to be talking to these people an economist who is going to be talking to all the commerce section students and there'll be a competition thereafter wherein they present their case and uh, that case is pertaining to uh, well I, i'll leave it for tomorrow but then just wanted to make a mention of <laughs> something else that's coming up <laughs> uh, okay smriti all right thank no, you so much ma'am ma i'd like so to add yes ma'am yes smriti okay and i'd like to like to add a final very honest and yes. a note full of Uh, gratitude from all of the students, and that is that 
uh, we are so grateful for all of the praises that uh, you give us for the acknowledgement for the recognition and for all of the support that we're receiving from each and every person of the adult community of the school and we had never expected that we would be doing such things that we would be coming up here that we would be able to directly communicate about such sensitive issues with uh, people from the adult community we had never thought that we would be able to communicate with uh, everybody on such a deep on such a soulful on such a what what can, what else can i say it is just so amazing to and it is very liberating to be expressing ourselves like that and for that i'd like to thank um, our principal ma'am our founder manager sir geeta ma'am uh, to manju ma'am deepthi ma'am all of the students who joined uh, the class teachers the jyp club mha inside out everybody literally everybody who joined the session made it so special because without everyone who was here this session wouldn't be what it was and i am so glad to be moderating it and i feel honored to have received such an opportunity uh ending this session is hard for me to be honest because i felt like i was just so immersed in it so involved because this was something that we had wanted to talk about for so long and it is finally so great to be uh discussing this with the right people to be discussing it with people who would be able to give us the guidance that we need that we require and we know we know on a deep down a uh, basic level that on the exterior the teens might pretend that no we know everything we are more tech savvy we are this we are that but on the inside deep down we are all seeking for that uh, person who will hold our finger and show us what the real correct nice world looks like and we don't have to be a part of all the toxicity how we can deal with all of it we all need such a person in our life and we're so glad to have our teachers play that role for us so thank you so much for joining this discussion everybody and it so, was such a pleasure before, having you smriti before we end can i give you one more assignment yes, can you prepare little little snippets and mm -hmm. uh, sort of try and uh, on the various rules uh, that are there the cyber rules which are there plus yes. a little bit of talk regarding how very cautiously the children should uh, use social media because now children have got used to and parents have also got used to seeing the google classroom so we can even give these little messages to that through that okay so if you can prepare small little snippets and give it we to document us document the whole discussion ma'am uh document it but then break it up into little pieces yes, if you document the entire different, thing together different people different may not like to read it so we would like you to ma'am can i speak little pieces sabha ma'am of course yes. i would like to share it on the google classroom yes ma'am sabha ma'am <laughs> Thank so you, ma'am. Nice. Thank you so much. I really, I had to speak over here, Smriti. Please. Thank you so much for you, you and your friends for giving us such a wonderful session. We just didn't. Uh, uh, we just kept thinking. You know, our minds were bracing as to what you're talking about. Everything is so very relevant, and the way you expressed everything, you, Adwan, Fiza, all of you, you were beautiful. very well and like ma what ma'am said i was just about to say that can you put this in short uh, uh, points for even for the primary children to understand yes, okay so we can uh, share it with even the primary children like say class 4 and 5 they are uh, even so if you can simplify it that this simplified way. ambiguous language yes yes, yes right ma'am Yes, you can do absolutely. That for also? Absolutely, that would be the biggest advantage of this forum that we had. This session that we had, that would be the biggest advantage of that, right? Yes. So let's let's right, uh, break, let it seep and down because that is the need of the hour, right, right? ma'am? Thank thing, you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma ma to add to it, I just want uh, Smriti to tell that we are meeting daily. I mean, uh, like Averil yes, said something. So for it's uh, an open forum. Seven to seven thirty, we are discussing every day, and students are joining us, and they are discussing very, very candidly. I mean, uh, with all the things, one thought is given, and we discuss about that, and then we have a good session also. So please, Smriti, tell about that, and then we finish. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, Inside Out holds daily sessions in the evening for de-stress, and we call it de-stressing Inside Out sessions at six fifty-five p.m. I uh, host the meeting on Zoom. and uh, we pick up a quote one good quote every day i think the one for today is that uh, your path is your own and 
people can walk with you on your path but they cannot walk it for you this is what we are going to discuss today in the evening at 6:55 and uh, while we discuss these things we receive inputs from the students and manju ma'am and deepthi ma'am are always positively there to uh, guide us to given their life experiences which matter a lot to us because we get to learn so much from it we also see we also are able to connect with the students and the teachers on a much deeper level and we're able to you know kind of form a family bond really and it is so nice to be connecting with people like that and with that we also have some little games stress buster games in the end and there's this section it's called this or that where we give two fun alternatives to everybody uh, like if you want i can just have a quick one here yes please okay okay so uh, if i give you an alternative to choose between um, paneer and cheese which one would you go for Okay. You can write it down in the chat box. Cheese. Deep Sea Bama has written cheese. <laughs> All right. Or Adya has written uh, paneer. All right. Teachers, please feel free to add in your input because that is what we do in the inside out sessions. In the end, we host. such fun questions like these and this was just a very lame one that i came up with spontaneously we think we uh, research such questions that would genuinely uh, prompt people to think in a creative way so that they are able to release all those uh, dopamines and serotonins to keep them happy and going and help them de-stress so that is what inside out does in the evenings and i'm so very happy to be um, the leading member of such a club that helps people smile every day and you can see the smile on our faces yeah. you're making us smile too <laughs> yes, <ma 'am. laughs> it's so rewarding <laughs> right so rewarding. that was really wonderful smriti and uh, uh, please hold such sessions for uh, more number of students so now you what you need to do is involve more and more class 11 students involve more and more your juniors mm -hmm. uh, in this in such a program okay thank you so much once again mm -hmm. uh for uh, this so discussion the session that you held we we indeed felt very happy about it thank you deepthi ma'am and thank you manju ma'am for uh, being there so solidly uh, with our students thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you so thank much you. for inviting us thank, thank you. you thank you Congratulations, team! Inside out. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Well done. You are always there <laughs> behind the curtains, ma'am. Smriti, when you are make, uh, writing down the challenges, Smriti, are you there? Uh, ma'am, she just left. I will convey to her, ma'am. Smriti, uh, just add one more challenge, which is very, sure. very common. That is uh, identity theft. many yes. people are making fake uh, ids in the name yes, of other people and sure, they are creating nuisance so this is one a challenge which should definitely be there and children should be warned about this sure ma'am sure i will pass it on to her thank you thank you thank you ma'am all right bye 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 bye, bye ma'am thank you so much ma'am encouraging us to take on uh, these things further so thank I you ma'am for coming no no not troubling at all <laughs> okay, bye bye all the best for tomorrow thank you ma'am thank you thank you um ma'am tomorrow at what time manju ma'am manju ma'am just left ma'am i believe yeah. tomorrow at 11 ma'am yeah manju ma'am is here ma'am ma'am tomorrow manju at 11 we are meeting send a link to me that's all sure ma'am i will i will Okay. Manju ma'am you are muted Manju ma'am you are on mute actually Oh sorry so yeah. I'll send the link yeah the link will be sent 
Kriti yes. is hosting it. Kriti. Anyone who all, wants to... and ma'am said, Shobha ma'am, ma'am said that all coma commerce students should be there in that. Okay, then we we'll, uh, just send it. Then I'll send the commerce students. Uh, ah, okay, ma'am. Okay, I'll just. You send it to me, then I'll send it in the Google Class. Ah, and I'll tell okay. you. Then only. Into the right, ma'am. Today I posted all though, but I will send you. Okay, you posted it, then it's okay. So no. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'll send you. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, Shubha, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay, motivation and specific. <laughs> Even at eleven at night, taking motivation, talking, discussing. Yeah, Shubha, ma'am is always there. Yes, <laughs> thank you all. You are so good. It's a teamwork. Very good teamwork in Gomti Nagar. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's. Mm -hmm. that's uh, thank you, ma'am. I'm ending this meeting now, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, you can end. Bye. 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 -bye. Bye, -bye.